Today we're going to do something new. I'm going to scratch build a piece of sci-fi terrain out of flat styrene and acrylic stock. No kits, no instructions, just ideas. This video is full of 3D printing, slicing and sanding, math, which I know everyone's very excited for, and of course, painting. Let's crack this open. I'll be the first to admit that I'm not one for planning. I don't keep a journal of inspirational source material and I don't think much about what I'm going to do before I do it. This has got me into trouble in the past, so I thought that I would give this planning thing a real go. <laughs> Is planning worth it? Society still doesn't know. We're gonna figure out in this video, so stick around while the guy who paints plastic toy soldiers in his basement is gonna teach you the value of planning. You're welcome, humanity. I began by browsing ArtStation for architectural sci-fi designs. I often start on this website when I'm in need of inspiration. I made a list of all the details I found from various designs that I liked and might possibly include in my building. I also wanted my structure to have some sort of identity. For instance, nowadays we have shopping centers, schools, fire stations, etc. I really like the idea of a sci-fi lighthouse, but I think to do that right you would need to work with LEDs, and I'm not there yet in my terrain creation journey. I chose the sci-fi car repair shop as my goal. There are probably vehicles in the future that would need some kind of repair work, so it checks out in my brain. At the time, I didn't realize that I had already made a garage of sorts. Apparently, vehicular repairing is my thing. That and hot pink and vampires. Quite an eclectic list. What are we talking about? Oh yeah, I'm making something. While drawing up my building, one idea I leaned into pretty heavily was the use of angles. It would be easy enough to create a cubed shaped building, but I wanted to make a polyhedron, which is basically a 3D octagon. I also like the idea of a structure with varying heights and shapes, so maybe a more rectangular office building and a larger garage where the repair work actually happens. With my ideas worked out roughly and the dimensions of my buildings figured out based on the scale of game I was working with, it was time to do enough math to make my high school geometry teacher cry out in his sleep, oh, oh, someone somewhere is using math and it isn't on homework? I knew it! All right, with the numbers figured out, it was time to move on to the next phase. In order to get the kind of precision I often associate with sci-fi architecture, I busted out my big guns. Just kidding, these guns are more like pea shooters. I'm talking about these guns. This is a vinyl cutter, essentially, made by the company Cricut. With it, I'm able to create 2D designs in Adobe Illustrator and cut on those lines with the machine with pretty great precision. Think of it as a budget laser cutter. Massive shout out to 40K Ham Slam, which is a fantastic name, a smaller creator who made some wonderful videos explaining how to use this tool from start to finish. He even met with me to troubleshoot some of my problems early on in the process. If you need any help with this process, definitely check out his videos that I've linked in the description. One of the limitations of the Cricut is how thick a stock it can cut. It especially struggles around curves. Here I'm using a 0.02 inch thick styrene. To bulk out various details like window and door trims, I have to cut a second piece that gets adhered later. Also, the knife blade creates a burr that needs to be cleaned off in some way. While I was using the vinyl cutter, I attempted to cut panel lines into my walls at a lower cut pressure to avoid cutting all the way through the styrene. With some cleanup and deepening with a triangle file, this works pretty well. Before gluing the parts together, I employed one last test with a scale model tool known as a pounce wheel. This little toothed wheel creates the impression of some kind of fastener embedded below the surface. It's pretty cool. I think I'll stick with the panel lines, but skip the pounce wheel. I have a different idea to add detail to the walls later on. With all my tests complete, I could glue the parts together. I cut out some 135 degree angle guides and with the help of some structural styrene to keep everything nice and straight, I was able to glue the parts together with this test piece to pretty convincing effect. With all my Cricut tests complete, I could finally cut out my design.
okay, that was pretty sexy. Let's cool off with a potentially less sexy message from this video sponsor. One Page Rules is in the business of making miniatures for war games, and you can check out their Patreon campaign that has a ton of STL files for you to download and print for war games and RPGs. Every month you get tons of fantasy and sci-fi themed bases and minis. If you sign up for their $10 tier right now, you get access to over 60 models and 80 bases. I repeat, all of this for $10. When I was 13 years old, I had to mow two lawns to buy a single box of GW minis, and it didn't have 60 models or 80 scenic bases in it. And I probably don't need to tell you that it costs a little bit more than $10. You can also find their older 3D sculpts on their web store, which currently has a 70% discount available to their patrons now until the end of June. Newcomers to the Patreon also get a big welcome pack, and there's rewards for patrons who stick around for three months in the shape of even more gigantic and sexy models. As if there wasn't enough value in this Patreon yet, you get access to extended rule sets for their games that are fast, easy to play, enjoyable, and full strategy. As the name suggests, the rules for the systems, of which there are five, are one page long each. The non-extended rule sets are available for free on their site. It's a double-sided page, but they can get away with that for now. Their games can be played with whatever miniatures you like. You can find all the links for one page rules in the description of this video. Thank you for sponsoring this video, OPR. Now back to my scratch build. One thing I learned from my earlier tests was that my styrene angle guide was a good idea, but would be much more functional if it was thicker. So I designed a couple cheese wedge looking things in Fusion 360 and printed them out. These worked a lot better, but they kind of got in the way later when I was trying to install windows behind the styrene, but that's a problem for future Scott to figure out. The process of gluing all these parts together took a while, and that's okay. I often have to remind myself that the process is also enjoyable, not just the end result. With a mixture of plastic glue and super glue, I slowly glued together all the trim and walls. Whenever I could, I tried to mix in some different materials like this mesh for the door of my office or this interesting textured styrene for the ramp of my garage. These different materials allow us to differentiate our building with minimal effort required. Despite leveraging my high school geometry skills, I was unable to figure out the correct interior angles of these trapezoids, so I had some gap filling and sanding to do. In order for any gap filler to really work, it needs something to cling to, so I backfilled these corners with some of that mesh. I gap filled and sanded for at least two days, creating a sandstorm of milliput and styrene that would make even Darude jealous. With all that sanding done, I had to rescribe some of my panel lines with a triangle file. Now that the base form of the two buildings is complete, the last stage in this process is to clean everything off with soap and water to avoid having little bits of dust and styrene scrap messing up my future paint job. Time for this building to really come alive. Let's add a bunch of details. There are a couple of approaches that you can take to fill out your terrain with various bits and bobs. You can scratch build some ideas like with this pipe, ring, and mesh dome that I created. Do I know what this thing is or what it does? Definitely not. You can also look at other kits from various manufacturers to find the right bits. I was pretty careful to select bits that fit in the world I was trying to craft. If you're not careful and add some boxes with bones in it or purity seals, all of a sudden you're in a very grim and dark place, and that wasn't my goal with these buildings. You can also take bits and pieces from other kits and modify them like I did with this chain gantry thing. Another place to fill your bits collection is with 3D printing. I printed some sci-fi greebs from Trent of Miscast, the YouTube channel, using my fancy new 4K resin printer and curing station from Frozen, which they sent to me for free. If you have a printer, generic pieces of sci-fi gobbledygook is a great way to leverage it. Other opportunities to add in great detail is with photo-etched brass parts. I bought these ones a long time ago, but they allow for very thin, precise detail that can be bent without snapping. Let's keep this greeb train going. Every sci-fi structure needs some cables, and there's a million ways to add them, either with guitar strings, sculpting your own with green stuff, cable world rollers, or using aluminum wire and bending it to shape. Lastly, we need some rivets. Using some scale model rivets, I spent an afternoon gluing tiny little half spheres onto my structure, and it was totally worth it. I picked up this idea from Soul underscore Vince on Instagram, who also makes some fantastic terrain if you were looking for inspiration. At this point, I think my grebe amount is reaching levels of overdoneness, so I think we can move on to our last stage. I knew I wanted this building to be older and dilapidated, so I started with an undercoat of a rusty brown. Then, with some masks made out of brass, I made the color more irregular with some orange. 
With the undercoat complete, I painted on some heavy chipping medium. I find that when I apply this stuff with an airbrush, it does it in too thin a layer, and it's faster to apply one thick layer of it with a brush versus multiple thin layers with an airbrush. I did a test with hairspray and some spray cans, which would be more economical for larger structures like this, but it wasn't working in the way I wanted it to. With the undercoat ready, I applied some base coats. My scheme was inspired by a picture of graffiti I took in New York City, a nice palette of blue, cream, and warm tones. With that in mind and some masking, I painted the bottom third of the building with blue, and after a very sexy tape removal, we can move on to the fun part. With a damp throwaway brush, I can start to remove the upper layer of paint, revealing the rusty layer below. I discovered that the original rust layer didn't like sticking to the brass elements I added, and this is likely because I didn't scuff up the surface to create better tooth for the paint to stick to. I was rushing the process and didn't give the paint time to fully cure. And also, I didn't use any primer to help with paint adhesion. It's alright though, with a little bit of paint, we can fix it right up. I painted the metal details with some dark silver paint and washed it with black enamel, but that didn't really do much. I mixed up an oil wash for the building with brown and black and sunk it into all those lovely panel lines and rivets that I worked so hard to include. I added some silver chips to the larger rusty areas with a sponge and some bright silver paint, and then I had a few extra details like a sooty sci-fi chimney or a glowing access panel to paint before moving on to the last step. With some acrylic sheet, I used the vinyl cutter one last time to make a cool shatterproof window design that I bent to match the profile of my building with a nice straight edge and some clamps. With the shape right, I tried to glue it on my building with PVA glue, but that proved too troublesome. I settled on using contact cement because I can accurately place the glue and it dries when I touch the two halves together instantly. I backfilled the rounded rectangle shapes I cut earlier in the process with more acrylic that I sanded and painted with Tamiya Clear Orange to add a final bit of orange color. With that done, I could finally glue together the two halves and this scratch built terrain project was finally complete. This build and design process took me close to three weeks to complete. It was difficult and annoying at multiple instances, but I got to do something that I've never experienced in the hobby of miniature painting. Mini painting can often get some critique for being more of an artisan's pastime than an actual art form because you start with something that someone else already created and you modify it. Whether or not that's actually true, it was nice to design something from the ground up and it gave me a ton of confidence to leverage these tools and techniques when I'm creating something more serious, like a diorama for a painting competition. Despite struggling with the process, I am super proud of the end result. I'd love a full city of something like this, but I don't think that's very possible due to time constraints. If you're into the process of making terrain, I have a few other videos where I explore fantasy subjects for you to check out, linked at the end of this video. That's gonna do it for this video, guys. I'm sorry I took a while to make. Hopefully it was worth the wait. If you like the channel and you want to support it, there are a number of ways that you can do it, namely a Patreon campaign with a bunch of fun rewards like a Discord server where you and I can hang out any day of the week and chat about your miniature painting projects, or how gluing tiny rivets to a sci-fi structure is time-consuming AF. Other ways to support the channel are also linked down in the description, like buying The Duchess, a vampire miniature that I produce and sell, and also a digital course along with it, which teaches you how to paint the model stroke for stroke. I don't know why I got so excited there. Subscribe or die! And most importantly, don't forget to paint my minis!